question is from Tim Craven. What are some exercises for someone to repair poor thoracic mobility? Yeah, so thoracic mobility, they're referring to the the part of the spine that's, uh, well, the thoracic part of the spine, but this is up by where your shoulder blades would be. So it's kind of like your upper, back. upper, upper middle, mid, you know, middle back area. It's not where your neck is. That's a, a different part of the spine, but kind of up where your shoulder blades are. And if that part of your spine has poor mobility, either because it's tight or even maybe because it's super loose but not strong, you can cause um, it can cause a lot of different kinds of problems. Now, the most common types of issues that people will get from poor thoracic mobility is neck tightness and stiffness um, and shoulder problems. Uh, so it's an important thing to work on. Now, people with a very mobile thoracic area, or should I say flexible one that's not very strong, now you start to get upper back uh, pain and problems. This is where people feel you know, mid-back pain uh, when they get stressed out or when they're sitting too long or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, how do you repair that? Uh, boy, there's a lot of phenomenal movements you can do. One of my favorites, uh, I actually like uh, lizard growth rotation for, to work on that rotational thoracic mobility. I know we did a video on that a while ago. I think you were the one in it, Adam. Yeah, and I'm going to redo that one. I'm actually going to do, this is a cool question. I didn't know whoever picked this, um, that you went this way because this was actually in my notes um, for me to do a video on this the, on the YouTube channel. Uh, and I, I really want to do it because this is an area, this is an area that I'm addressing right now. So I uh, to improve, to continually to work on my, my squat. So my, my squat is far from perfect still, but it's come a long way in the last two years. Uh, the main focus was to address my ankle mobility and my hip mobility uh, to where I can now sit in a really deep squat. Now, I still don't have great thoracic mobility. And what that looks like is uh, when I, at the bottom of my squat, I'm still got forward head and kind of rounded shoulders. It's really tough for me to control and stay in that really good retracted position in my head in a neutral position, especially with a loaded bar and deep in a squat. And so um, I have two things that I do. So I, I, we've talked about this on the podcast before many times that, uh, you know, we, we recommend when people find, you know, one or two, th two things from Maps Prime Pro that you can tell you need to work on or greatly benefit your movement to just stick to those two and, and hammer them home and get good at it. For me, there's two things that I do uh, every day before uh, I work out, especially if I'm squatting uh, to address this. Uh, lizard with rotation is a good one, though, too, even though it's not the two main ones that I do. So I do our zone one test in prime one. Oh, yeah, that um, one's ideal. Which what I like about that is I use the wall for feedback, right? So I put my back against the wall. Um, I then tuck my chin so that I can feel that my my uh, uh, my cervical spine is in a neutral position. So my head is back and neutral where it should be. So and I can feel it against the wall. So I, I can I get feedback there. And then uh, I, I put my arms up by my by my side. So my wrist, my elbows, my head, everything is being pinned. And all I'm really doing there is you're you're waking up all those muscles in your back or getting better connected with them that are responsible for keeping me in that good neutral position or a retracted mm. uh, position as I go down. And so I'll do hold. So I'll get in that position, tuck the chin, drive the wrist and elbows back against the wall, and I'll push and uh, push against the wall as hard as I can for five, like real similar to how I taught the combat stretch where I lift my toes up and I'm trying to intensify that move. I'm also pushing against this wall with my head, my wrist, and my elbows and driving against that to kind of get those all connected. And I do the same thing, five-second intense holds, relax, five-second intense holds. I do that for five times, and I do two or three rounds. That's the first movement. And then the second one is something that I can do now that I wasn't able to do before. I've also done a, a video of this on my uh, Instagram where you may have seen me uh, sitting down in front of the squat rack uh, at, a, at the deepest position I can get, and then I grab a band, and I do band pull-aparts in that position. And while I'm doing the band pull-aparts, I'm also trying to tuck my chin back. I do that for a primer before I get in my squat. Those two things, uh, I've, I've noticed the most benefits for me personally, even though I do like the lizard with rotation, but it's in my notes to reteach it because mm. something I see people do uh, wrong with the lizard with rotation is they just kind of go through the motion of doing the rotation 
Sure, that's decent for warming you up, but if the idea is to improve the mobility, you need to be challenging the end ranges of motion, which is would mean taking that lizard with rotation to the end point and then challenging it by intensifying it there. That's what's going to really increase the mobility. I noticed too, like uh, something I was in the a gymnastic class a long time ago when I was just trying to experiment and find out other forms of modalities out there that people were using. And this is when I was really getting into body weight training. And I found out when we were trying to do these tuck rolls where, you know, you would do a handstand, then you try and tuck and then kind of roll out of it. I had a really fucking hard time with that. And my, my thoracic spine was super stiff and I couldn't get the flexibility out of it. It takes to be able to kind of roll into that rounded back position. Mm. Uh, and I know that like, this might be a common thing for guys or whatever that are, you know, trying to really build up their back and build up, you know, their chest and whatnot. Um, but for me, it was, it, it was, it was challenging. So I tried to address it uh, through a bunch of different ways and like doing cat and cow and trying really to articulate oh, yeah. my spine and to really push and get reconnected there to my thoracic spine w w was something that I definitely had to do as well as visit rounded back lifting. And so like hugging, uh, you know, heavy medicine balls and, you know, placing them almost like an at Atlas stone lift or just uh, squatting with, you know, a rounded ball and like really squeezing it. Zercher squats. Good. Zercher squats is another great one. So just things like that to consider if that's a problem of, with your thoracic spine that you're, you're dealing with. Yeah, and you, you, you'll actually, you sometimes find that people's low back pain is because of their, mm -hmm. the, the poor thoracic mobility. I mean, if you're rotating um, and your thoracic spine is tight, you're still trying to rotate. So what ends up happening is, for a lot of people, is their low back takes over, and they over rotate in their in their low back um, because it's kind of picking up the slack. So sometimes, uh, and sometimes it's often uh, that I found this where one area hurts, but it's not because that area is the problem. It's because of the surrounding areas. It's that almost are causing all, it's almost always like that. Yeah. It's rarely ever you know I have low back pain because I have a bad low back. It's because something else is stressing the low back, and you know I'd echo that. So I think that. It's really common that if you have poor thoracic mobility, more likely than not, you're also somebody who has kind of the, the forward shoulder, forward head. And so you're carrying, the, you're distributing the weight forward. And so think about, and I used to, to give people the analogy uh, of what that, what they were doing to their low back to get the point across is I'd have them grab like a 40 pound dumbbell and like slightly lean over. And then, like, just have them hold that for a second, and, and then within 30 seconds to a minute, they're like, oh, my God, my low back is fatiguing out. It's like, okay, that's what you're doing to yourself all day long. Now, I made you hold a 40-pound weight to exaggerate it, uh, and so you notice it right away. But all day long, you're carrying your weight forward and like that, and so it's not being distributed evenly throughout your spine. And so you're getting all this stress in the low back. And so addressing thoracic mobility and getting to that place where you can – you know, address the upper cross syndrome or the forward shoulder I'm talking about, a lot of times will alleviate somebody's mm -hmm. low back pain.